mixture problems are actually a very common use of uh, linear systems because usually we know two different bits of information about whatever is being mixed. This example, or this question that was sent in by Kayla, who was looking for some help with a nickels and dimes question, is a great, uh, great sort of a illustration of the concept. She said that she had 24 coins that consisted of nickels and dimes, and that the value of the coins was $2.20, and she needed to find how many nickels and dimes there were total. So what we know then is that if there are 24 coins consisting of nickels and dimes, if we let n be the number of nickels, and d be the number of dimes, then n plus d, the number of nickels, plus the number of dimes, must equal 24. So we can say n plus d is 24. Then we also know that the value of the coins is $2.20. Now this, this is where you have to pay attention because this is where these things can get a little bit tricky if you don't sort of point out for yourself very clearly to yourself that your variables represent the number of each coin. This n, n is not the number or the value of the nickels that you have. It's just the number of nickels you have. So if we say that n is the number of nickels, then n times 5 would be the value of the nickels that you have in pennies, the number of cents that the nickels you have are worth, because each nickel is worth 5 cents. So if we say n times 5, plus d times 10, then we know the total number of pennies that we have, or the value of pennies that we have, and we can say that that is equal to 220. $2.20 is the same as 220 pennies. So then it's much easier to keep track of what our variable res represents as compared to the value of the coins total. So the number of nickels times 5 plus the number of dimes times 10 is equal to 220, which is the number of pennies that their value is worth. Now we can do some substitution. We know that n plus d is 24, so we could say that n is the same thing as 24 minus d. So we can take that 24 minus d and put it in place of n in our other equation. That gives us 24 minus d times 5 plus 10d equals 220. We distribute that 5, so we have 5 times 24 and 5 times negative d, so we have what, 120? 120 minus 5d plus 10d equals 220. So we can subtract the 120 from both sides. It goes away here minus 120 leaves us 100 on this side and negative 5d plus 10d leaves 5d so if 5d is 100 divide both sides by 5 and we get d equals 20 so that tells us that the number of dimes we have is 20 remember that d was the number of dimes so if we have 20 dimes if there are 20 dimes then if there are a total of 24 coins, there must be four nickels. And we can do that by substituting in if we want by taking the 20 dimes or the 20 D and putting it in here. N plus 20 equals 24. Solve for N, we get N equals four. That's all there is to it.